All right, so Python programming and introduction to computer science, second edition. Uh, John Zell, PhD, a fantastic primer or primer uh, of computer science uh, principles. A lot of folks agree with me, um, but yeah, I wanted to go over this this book uh, pretty thoroughly. Um, we're not going to cover the review true false questions, nor are we going to cover the multiple choice uh, or regular discussion questions. Uh, at the end of each chapter. Um, those we're going to cover, but I will cover them in, in, in different uh, um, venues um, where they're going to do it with regards to like uh, quizzes in between each uh, tutorial um, uh, lecture or we're going to do it um, via PDF um, with explanations and whatnot. But in terms of these video tutorials, I want to go over the programming exercises um, very thoroughly. So. And this is our first uh, class um, and our first book that we're going to cover. I really have enjoyed this book, and I definitely want to offer this as a resource um, to folks so they can, you guys can follow along um, and see and see how your your code looks. I'm sure it's not going to look exactly the same as mine, um, but yeah, let's um, yeah. So I'm using Atom. Uh, I'm on a Mac. Uh, I also am using the Python 3.5.2 shell. I do give instructions with regards to, to downloading um, uh, in this in this uh, class to, to download Atom or Python, um, uh, the Python shell. Uh, and I give you Mac and Windows uh, explanations. So here we are. So Python 3.5.2 shell, uh, Python, the second edition Python programming book by John Zell, PhD. It covers Python 3, so we're, we're in the right one. So, uh, number one, programming exercises at the end of chapter one. Uh, this is on page 23. Start up an interactive Python session and try typing in each of the following commands. Write down the results you see. Okay, so A is going to be print hello world. So this is something that you see as the first program uh, when people get into programming. Um, this is uh, what we see. So uh, now in this shell, so I'm going to do it lowercase here because that's exactly, I want to type exactly what they want you to type just for practice. Um, even though A had it lowercase, because A had it lowercase, I decided to make the, the W uh uh, lowercase. So then, then, then for for B, we want it to be separate. So print. So hello, you're gonna do the double uh, um, quotations, and then world the double. Now, in some editors, um, you know, it, it ends, it automatically starts, it, it does an opening and closing bracket, you know, like Sublime Text or, or Atom, you know, so for HTML or, or whatnot, they have the, you know, the, if you create the opening bracket, it'll automatically create the closing bracket for you when you finish that opening bracket. Um, when it comes to the terminal, as well as this shell, Python 3, uh, it um it doesn't so you just want to you know just be aware of like the differences um and uh you know as you as you build your your habits and build your 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 study habits and your work habits you know you just want to keep those little granular uh de 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 details in mind um also in the terminal um in the terminal you can press up and it will it will scroll through your last uh, enter uh, commands, um, but in the Python shell, you actually can't. It actually scrolls up to the different, um, you know, to the uh, to the different lines uh, before that. So, so it's going to be so print three. It's three print three point This is pretty rudimentary. Uh, but as you probably know, there's a decently steep learning curve um, in programming. So you always want to 
and I messed up. It's actually two plus three. You always want to try to build good habits. Um, you know, Zed Shaw has a book, uh, multiple books, and he's he's definitely one of the, you know, the most um, prolific uh, online teachers and uh, publishers of to help uh, sort of newbies to learn, you know, different programming uh, languages like Python or Ruby, etc. Um, and he really is a big uh, proponent of, you know, typing exactly everything the way that he wrote it. And then also um, to read the code forwards and backwards. So he's a big proponent of that. And, you know, you, you know, um, it's important to take, you know, what a lot of these guys say seriously just because, you know, they're not doing it because they're bored. I mean, yeah, it's business and, you know, they're doing it to make a living. But at the same time, it's like the guy's been in the game for so long. Like he, he, he probably knows what he's talking about. And you probably should, you know, should take heed to, you know, what these guys say in that uh, regard. So I've always been a fan of just taking, just building good habits, even if I'm doing something that's really remedial. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it served me well academically. And um, I, I really, you know, think it may serve uh, well to folks um, in programming as well. So yeah, so print two plus three. So making sure to end. So yeah, so note how. So let's let's scroll up. Okay, so quotation marks. It doesn't print the quotation marks. It prints hello world without the quotation marks, right? And then you print hello. Uh, and then with the comma, if you put a comma there, and then the word world, it just prints the same thing. It prints the same thing as if excuse me so the comma inside the quotation marks prints the comma makes sense though right because it's inside the quotation marks it prints everything inside the quotation marks um uh in in this statement here but then you've got print hello and then comma and then world what it does is it reads the Python interpreter reads hello or it prints hello, rather. And then that comma essentially means add a space and then print this out. That's really what it does. It, it, it allows you to add that space, but then it prints this out. But it's still, because these are both strings, they're going to print them separately. So essentially, it prints the same thing as this without the comma. Right? So this is hello, comma, world. And this is just hello, world with no, no comma. Um, so you want to slowly patiently note the distinctions and note like what is the interpreter doing um you know with regards to python like how does it how does it perceive it and you know what is the what is you know what what's returned um or or printed you know well, here it's it's what specifically is printed um so print three it's just going to print the integer three 3.0 this is a float so the class type is the data type is the float Three, it just prints exactly that, 3.0. This is the time sign, two, 2 times 3, the asterisk above the 8, 6, and 2 plus 3, 5, right? Note, we're not, note that we're not using quotation marks, so these are all numbers, right? Integer, float, integers, integers, here's floats, 5.0. So a float plus a float equals a float. So these are things you want to say out loud, like think about out loud. Okay, a float plus a float in Python is just a float. Okay. Now, we want to think about what's going on. Okay, so this is a 2. And now the plus, what does the plus do? Well, the plus is like the comma, only there's no space. Right, so the comma gave us a space. We have a little space right here. That's what the comma does, right? It, it prints this, and it gives you a little space, and then it prints this as well. So that's why it says hello, little space, one space, and then world. Here, this two is a string. It's a string. It's the character two, the number, the character two, string two, and then plus a three. We're not adding two plus three. That, that's five. That's an integer plus an integer, right? It's two plus three. But a string concatenates them, right? Smashes them together. So the two plus the three is saying, hey, I'm going to 
whatever is over here, we're going to add it to this with no space. So that's going to be 2 plus 3. Uh, the string, rather. The string plus the string is a 2 with a 3 with no space in between that plus sign. Now, if they're just being added, then you're, you know, then you're just doing the math inside the parentheses, and then you print print that output there. So print that 5, um, which it, 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 it prints out. All right, so let's do... So now what you want to do also is keep your brain active, right? Like you want to think about, okay, well, what can, what can, what do I think this is going to print out? So two plus three equals two plus three. Okay, what do we think it's going to print out? Well, probably going to print out two without the quotation, right? It's going to, this two, this space, this plus, this three. The space again, this three, the space, this equal sign. Then it's going to print out a space because that comma means there's going to be a space. And then two plus three is going to be five. So it's going to be two plus three equals five. Now, if there was a plus, I don't know if that would even work, but we could try it. That's the other thing too, um, is to try stuff. I had a C++ teacher and he told me to just keep, he, was, he taught me first, computer science class I ever took. Actually, I actually took Pascal years ago, but um, the C++ teacher, he told me, he told us to keep typing things, keep practicing, like just keep like sniffing around, I guess. And it's, it's really good. It's, it's really good advice because it just, it's that curiosity, right? You want to keep being curious. You want to see, oh, what does this do? What does that do? Like, even if it shows up later, it probably will. I mean, it probably will, right? Especially when you're new and you're just getting warmed up and you don't know much, you know, it's like, just try stuff out. It gives you the joy of discovery and the joy of not knowing and making mistakes and, and, you know, being lost, you know, not knowing what's gonna, what's gonna happen. Like, it's just a psychological thing. And I think it was, it was right on. So we'll, we'll see what that, what, even though it's not part of these questions, uh, we'll just, we'll, we'll look at that anyways. Okay. So two plus three equals five. Okay, good. So now let's try it with the plus sign. Now, just because I've, I've, uh, this is a similar thing that happened with C++, we won't go over, we won't go over that, but basically, if you're using different data types, the concatenate sign won't, won't work, um, because they're different data types, they're trying to print sort of the same data type and the same block, so it shouldn't work, yeah. Can't convert in object to string implicitly. So this is a string. We're trying to convert this to be a string. So you can have a string plus a string. So they just get smashed together with no space. With no space. That plus means just smashed together. So that would that would have been if so if we if we put well yeah, we won't we won't worry about we won't worry about that right now. Like but you, you could change the uh, the date date data type to get rid of that uh, that but we won't worry about that right now let's just let's just do this work because we're going to learn that in this book so what do you think this produces does this produce two does it produce two smashed together with a times and a three no because it, they're integers right so it's just two two times three so integer times an integer is six and then print times three excuse me two to the third power that double means exponent. So two to the third power. Now, you guys probably already know all about this, but can we do this? We can. Um, but can we do this? We can't. So print in Python 3 is a function. Um, which is different than Python too. So just keep that in mind. Like what makes what makes these functions is the parentheses. So um, we might have been able to do that, get away with that in Python two, which is my terminal here. If you look at, at the terminal here, and I punch in, uh, um, so it's it's Python two. Now if I print that here. It just it it it, uh, it 
uh, produces six. So it returns six. Um, but And then here you can also do two times three, which is six. But in three, the print, the print statement is actually, it's a function. Um, so we have to have a parenthesis. Now, you also want to try other stuff. You're like, okay, well, what about this? What if I go over here and I do this and I do this? What do you think is going to happen, guys? What does it print out? Do you think it's going to be an error? Or do you think it's going to be nine? If you said the latter, you are correct. So it, it just, it, it doesn't matter if you've got a lot of space in between, if you've got, like, skip a bunch of lines, like Python just ignores that white space and allows you to... Um, allows you uh, allows it to be considered a function even you know even uh, with all that white space and then let's print two slash three so that's going to be two over three just like the fraction and if you did two over three just like the fraction it's going to be 0. 0.6 with that bar over it in math it's going to be 0. 0.6 repeated until infinity now it goes many uh, and note that it didn't I mean it's not a huge huge deal this is very granular but these are just things you want to process like oh okay some some interpreters might you know might change it that last one to a seven you know um, if I was if I was rounding I would round it to a seven if I, if I was doing it for a math class and I was writing it longhand I would turn it to a seven you also might want to count these. So like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, which I believe is sixteen bits. Um, you know, any comments or any any uh, thing you guys guys want to mention about this? Uh, please feel free to mention them below. But yeah, that's it's um, you know, sixteen characters from the decimal point so on the right side of the decimal point and it's for for an you know for a decimal that goes on forever you know you're going to get 16 you're going to get 16 uh places here um anyways that was number one and we'll do number two and possibly number three in the next video thank you very much